Hey everyone, it's Dominic, the Primetime Treasure Hunter. Welcome back to another video where we are gonna go over the top 10 most expensive and most profitable items that sold in my eBay store for the month of May 2019. It's always fun for me to go back and reflect over that prior month's top sales uh, because it motivates me going forwards to list uh, for the next month. I wanna make you know more sales that are like these and in addition to that, uh, it's just fun for me to share the information with you and uh, hopefully pass uh, on some information that could maybe uh, help you identify a potentially high profit uh, item that you otherwise may have overlooked. Uh, maybe you won't find the exact same item that I'm showing you here, but maybe you'll find something similar to it and uh, you know that could help you with your reselling business. So we're gonna start at number 10, work back to number one, and then after that, I have some uh, important housekeeping matters related to the channel that um, you, know, you could stick around for uh, because you might find some of that information interesting as well. So with that being said, let's start at number 10 and work our way back. So number 10 is a triplet uh, vintage analog needle multimeter it is also known as an ohms tester or an ohm tester now if you're worried that you're going to forget that word because it sounds uh, overly technical don't worry about it because as you can see here uh, on the device it typically says that somewhere on it so you could see there right below the model number it says ohms per volt and uh, you know that's your giveaway right there, that it's an ohms tester. Now, if you're wondering what the heck is an ohm, an ohm is a measure of electrical resistance. And that's what this device does. It is something that measures electrical resistance, it measures current, it measures voltage. So it's used typically as a fault finder for uh, people who are testing things like electrical circuits and batteries uh, helps them find, um, you know, and be pretty diagnostic in terms of, you know, what the exact problem is, what's going wrong. And a lot of people who, you know, use these types of devices like to use the vintage ones here uh, because they're, they're they're comfortable with it. Maybe they used it a long time ago and that's what they're familiar with, or they may even feel that it's just better in some ways or even more accurate than some of the digital models uh, that are out there and which will flash the number on a screen just like a vintage thermometer would. Uh, some people also like to use these items uh, for display pieces because they look like pretty cool uh, vintage pieces so they might put it in their garage or put it on a shelf somewhere and show it off with some of their other uh, vintage electronics. So uh, you can see here there's the needle there right to the left and that needle is what is going to give you the, the, the measurement and that's why this is called an analog uh, series or an analog device. Um, the cool thing about this item is that it is also short and it is compact and so you can see there's a nice side view of it and that makes it an ideal candidate for cubic rate priority shipping so that's something that should go through your head when you see an item like this it's not super heavy uh, but it weighs a few pounds and so you know it's going to go over into the priority range and um, if you're not already using pirate ship to check out the cubic rates there you should definitely go over and check that out because the prices are typically lower than what you are going to find through uh, the usps website or ebay's um, shipping center a um, couple other things uh, about this uh, device that I want to pass on to you that's important when you're outsourcing. If you remember the estate sale video where I showed uh, me sourcing this item, it was an estate sale where almost everything there, I'd say like 99% of the items there were overpriced and ridiculously overpriced. There was no way to make a profit on almost anything that was at this sale. And when I'm at a sale like that, this is the type of thing that I'm looking for. What I mean is I'm looking for something that one doesn't have a price sticker on it. So this had no price tag on it. And then I'm looking for something that's vintage electronics. And one of the reasons for that is because one of the things I know having done this for a while is that even if it doesn't work or even if there's no way for you to test whether it works, it still could sell for good money for parts. Um, that's why you see that I have it stated here in the title, 
boldly and in capital, well, not literally bold, but it looks bold, um, in capital letters, untested for parts. Now, in my case, that is literally true. I had no way to test this uh, because I did not have the leads. You could see there's no leads here. There are leads that would go into this to connect to something like a circuit board or a battery uh, to give it some input to test whether or not you know it has the proper voltage, the current, the electrical resistance, all that, those, all those sorts of things. Um, there was no way for me to test that here. Now, I, I mentioned that only as an aside. Uh, because there are some uh, people who will list something as untested, uh, like it's a old handheld video game and all it requires the person who's selling it to do is put in two AA batteries and then you can know if it works or not. So in those types of situations, just keep this in mind as a buyer because a lot of sellers out there are buying things. When someone says that something's untested and all you had to do is put a AA battery or a C battery in or something like that, um, ask the person who's selling it to put a battery like that in it to tell you if it works. Because typically what that means when someone says that it's untested for parts means that they did test it and it doesn't work, but they just don't want to say that it doesn't work. But, you know, in this instance, like I said, it's literally uh, untested because I had no way uh, to test it. But that being said, uh, people will still buy something like this uh, for parts uh, because they may try to repair uh, a similar item that they have. Uh, maybe they just need a knob or maybe they need the screen or you know something like that. You know who knows you know what they could po possibly need. They might need some inner component or something like that, part of the shell casing, uh, whatever. Uh, they may use it for that. And like I said, they also may, uh, use it for display as well. Now, when something is um, unpriced like this, uh, it's good for you because then you could, you know, usually do pretty well with uh, negotiating price uh, with the seller. Um, so in this instance, you know, they didn't really know what to do in terms of a price. So when I brought it up to the estate sale dealer, you know, the person was like, "All right, five bucks," and the five bucks would have been fine, but. Uh, the person actually went down to $3 because I pointed out that it had no leads. And so, you know, $3 is, um, you know, not bad at all for something that wound up selling for $45. So um, overall, good flip and um, maybe a little bit more information that you cared to know about Ohm's testers and um, uh, vintage uh, analog multimeters. But now you will know when you're out there in the field and you see something like this to look into it and pick it up even if it doesn't work or if you have no way to know it works. So let's move on to the next item. Uh, number nine. Now this is a toy and if Brandon Farr is still uh, hanging on here with me and uh, that's Retro Junk 1987. Congratulations, Brandon, if you are watching. Uh, Brandon just had a baby girl. I had him on for an interview a few weeks ago so you could check that out in my playlist interview section. He specializes in toys. And uh, Brandon really liked this piece uh, when he saw it. Uh, this is the uh, 1997 Jurassic Park Lost World a Triceratops Hatchling. So this hatchling is pretty cool. You could see it's like busting out of the egg here. And it looks like kind of a modern toy. So it might be something that somebody may pass on because it just doesn't look like, eh, yeah, maybe you know you're just looking for something you know really old like 80s, 70s, and this is 1997, so it's not that old. Uh, thing is, they didn't make a ton of them, and there's not a lot of people who still have them in the original cases. They made other ones, as you could see on the back. There's a T-Rex, there's a Raptor hatchling, and those sell for more uh, typically than the Triceratops one does because they're generally you know thought of as cooler dinosaurs. They have cooler names, the Raptors and the T-Rex, that sort of thing. Um, but this one still sold for uh, either $49.99 or $44.99. I can't remember. It was one of those, uh, one of those two. Uh, but uh, you know, definitely, um, definitely a good flip for something that I wound up getting for five bucks. This one I wound up getting at an estate sale. There was nothing at the sale for me, but uh, someone who worked at the estate sale knew that I liked toys, and when the person saw this, they put it aside for me, and so uh, it was just ready for me to pick up. And so, you know, that's why it's important, as I say, to make connections like this on these types of um, 
uh, you know, for items like this that you may like, like if you're someone who likes toys like myself, let people know that. Let them know you like toys. Let them know you like clothes or electronic devices or automotive parts, whatever it is that you like. Get the word out there. Let people know, especially those who are running the sales because they may hold an item like this, just like they did for me, on the side for you. And then, um, you know, you're the only one who gets, uh, you know, pretty much gets dibs on it. So, uh, uh, one thing I want to go back to over here, by the way, that I didn't mention, uh, is that if this one was working, uh, this would easily sell for over a hundred bucks. Um, but um, you know, wasn't working, so we got less for it. But just wanted you to know that uh, what the value of this would be, you know, if it was actually working. All right, so that's number ten and number nine. So, uh, and by the way. Uh, one other thing about this item before we go to number eight, uh, one of the things to clue in on or cue in on when you are looking for toys is it is important to look for things that say Jurassic Park on it or you know the Lost World, but it's typically going to say Jurassic Park somewhere on it. Um, those toys are very hot right now. So I would definitely, um, you know, anything you see that has Jurassic Park on it, look into it, check your comps, and uh, that might be an item that you could flip uh, for a good price. Okay, so let's go to number eight. Number eight, uh, this one brings a lot of joy to me to see. These are the Calvin and Hobbes books, and uh, I loved Calvin and Hobbes when I was a kid. I mean, I grew up reading these books as a teenager. I cried laughing reading them. Um, the Bill Watterson, who did this uh, cartoon, is an absolute comic genius. He really cracked me up. I really related a lot to Calvin. Um, Calvin is this uh, little kid who has this really vivid uh, imagination, and the, the books are amazing. If you've never read Calvin and Hobbes, um, you really should go, and you'll see these still a lot at um, a, a garage sales and um, flea markets and rummage sales. You'll see them there. Pick them up and put them into like little bunches like this. And you got to get a bunch of them. You got to get like 10 or 12 of them to make a good flip on it. But if you could get them for like, you know, 50 cents, 25 cents, a buck or something like that, you know, you could flip them for, you know, for around 45, 50 bucks. I took $5 off uh, of this. Someone made an offer to me for 45. So I wound up taking 45. Remember, these are going to go out media mail. These are not considered comic books these are still considered regular books um so you know you could ship them out that way so your price will uh, will be cheap but uh it's just fun to see uh calvin and Hobbes. if you try to sell these things individually though you're not going to do well you really need to lot them together like they made a billion authoritative calvin and Hobbes, as you see there on the top right um, you'll, that's the one you're going to see the most when you're out at sale. So, um, you know, only pick it up if you get it for a low price and you, um, you're going to kind of hold it to the side to try to, you know, make a lot, make a big pile like this and then ship them all out together. That's the way you want to do it with, uh, with the Calvin and Hobbes books. But boy, 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 I love that series. All right. Uh, this next one, uh, is pretty cool. This one, I give a shout out to my wife, uh, Mrs. Primetime who found this at a garage sale in New Jersey when she was visiting some relatives. She picked it up for 50 cents. This is an antique. It literally is an antique. An antique literally is something that is a hundred years or more in terms of age. This one actually comes from 1890. And the key words here that you wanna focus on is anything that says quadruple silver plated. Don't worry so much about the company Adelphi. Don't worry so much about it being a giant jug. The key words to focus on are quadruple silver plated. Now, if you're wondering, hey, how the heck am I going to know if this thing is quadruple silver plated? I mean, I know it kind of looks silver, but how am I going to know? Easy. All you have to do is look around the object. And when you get to the bottom of this piece, you are going to see here that it says quadruple silver plated. So it's very important when you list an item like this that you uh, zoom in on that, take a picture, and make sure that the buyers can see that. That's very important. In addition, make sure you capture the copyright date here, which is 1890. Uh, so all these old pieces are going to have uh, somewhere it's going to be stamped on it that it is quadruple silver plated. Some quadruple silver plated pieces could go for hundreds of dollars. So um, it just depends on what the item is. Uh, this one, you know, being sourced for 50 cents. 
and ultimately selling for 50 bucks took five bucks off for best offer um was just a great flip so congratulations to mrs primetime my wife for finding this item um another item that mrs primetime found uh with this one with my assistance because um, i have sold these books uh, before and so she knows that this is something to look out for and you may remember the estate sale where uh she found this at she was over in the corner one of the rooms and she kind of you know waved me over and showed me oh my gosh you know look at this uh she knows to look for anything that says advanced dnd which stands for dungeons and dragons and another name you definitely want to write down i've said this before but if you're new to the channel you could see i've zoomed in on it right there gary gygax gary gygax is one of the legendary um, writers for the uh, old original uh, vintage Dungeons and Dragons series and uh, this book is in near mint condition it's excellent uh, you can see here it's from 1979 it's very important for items like this that you take a picture of the spine uh, that will give your um, buyers a, a good sense on the condition of the book in addition to the cover. I also suggest, you know, obviously putting the back cover in there and also, you know, putting a picture in of the inside, give them a sense of what the contents look like and say something like, you know, um, th these are an adequate representation of what the vast majority of the pages inside look like. So they know you're not just highlighting the best uh, two pages to you know give a misleading look of the book uh, this one here uh, wound up selling for the price that you actually see this one sold for 80 bucks so uh, and you could see here one of the things that helped this book out as well is um, you know is the age so anything from the 1970s that's Dungeons and Dragons you want to look out for another thing you want to look out for is anything that says TSR on it um, if you've been following my channel for a while you know that but if you're new uh, something you definitely want to write down be on the lookout for TSR okay now let's go over to the next item here i have sold this before but the last time i sold it i sold it in a paperback version this was an actual hardcover version that i found at the same sale that i found uh this item here the dungeons and dragons book or technically mrs primetime found it um but uh, this one was just mixed in and the interesting thing about this this was mixed in in a closet with a whole bunch of uh, textbooks on like you know math and um, engineering and stuff and then all of a sudden i find this book i'm like what but that's why you have to look and that's why i like doing treasure hunting because you just never know where you're going to find something valuable now the key thing with this book is not only is it frankenstein that's not the key for this book that that's not the thing that makes it super uh well i say super but makes it valuable um, it's because it's illustrated by uh, Bernie Wrightson. The, the introduction by Stephen King helps, but that's not what is making this book sell. It's Bernie Wrightson. Bernie Wrightson is so famous for his illustrations and comic books, um, especially for uh, Swamp Thing, very well known for Swamp Thing. Um, and if you look inside this book, this is not actually a comic book. It is actually a real book with illustrations done by a famous comic book artist. And they're great illustrations. They're classic illustrations. Uh, and um, it's a hard book to find. So when you ever, ever you find this, uh, it's going to be a good flip for you. This one, I wound up uh, selling it for $75, um, you know, which... You know, no brainer for something that I picked up for like a buck or so. So yeah, I had it for 90, would have been great to get that, but 75 bucks for something you're getting for a dollar. You know, I'll take that any day. Uh, 1983 book right here. And another thing that helps is it's a first printing. So all those things, 80s, you know, Frankenstein, Birdie writes in, first print. Those are types of things. I'm trying to give you a sense of the types of things to look for or think of when you're out there in terms of trying to identify things with top of uh, value so let's go into the uh the top four now so this would be uh number four and this is the infinity gauntlet now if you are a fan of the marvel movies um like endgame and the avengers and that sort of stuff then you are probably familiar with with uh, the infinity gauntlet now even if you don't necessarily read comic books uh, this series is one that you're just not going to find sitting around. You're going to find these types of things if you purchase comic book collections. You'll find them in there from time to time. 
Uh, and whenever I find something like this, and I know this is going to be a good seller, uh, if you could find all six. So these sold for $80. Uh, not bad for something that I wound up sourcing for, you know, less than 15 cents per comic. So this is one of the reasons that I love comic books and love comic book related items because there's such a high return on investment, you know, when you could find the right items in these big collections. And, um, you know, there you could see the character Thanos, if you're not familiar with some of these uh what some of these characters and right there is the infinity gauntlet it's powered by these gems that he puts inside of it and so um you know there's a lot of comic books that are out there related to this series that are important to look for like silver surfer 44 and you know there's other ones out there but um they're just you know related to this whole infinity gauntlet infinity gems and so anything like that is very very hot right now there's another series called infinity war uh, that one is also good if you could find that mini series. Uh, anything with the word infinity in it uh, is something that is going to sell well if you could find them in decent condition, by the way. And, you know, you got to have the complete set. So, again, not something you're typically going to find laying around at a garage sale or something, uh, but you never know. You might find a comic book collection uh, somewhere and it might be something worth, uh, worth investing in if you could get items like this in it. Okay, uh, top three. Uh, now, right there, you're staring at what look like some binders, right? And you're probably saying, what? Why the heck are these binders uh, worth so much money? Uh, these binders that you see right there that have a price of 114 I wound up taking a best offer and selling these two binders for $100. Now, if you just had the binders itself with nothing in it, they still would sell, but not for this amount of money. You know, they might sell for like you know, 25 bucks, maybe a little bit less, you know, each, uh, they are, uh, very, very sought after, um, uh, binders. They, uh, came out to collect, uh, these items that you'll see in here, which are basically like biography cards, uh, for comic book characters. And so you could see the comic book character, like the one that I just showed you here earlier, uh, Thanos, he'd be here right on this, right on the side. Let me actually X out of that and zoom into it. So he'd be right here on the side, and obviously you would turn it towards you to you know to look at him better. And then right here, there's all sorts of biographical information on the character. Now this is a different character, but this would be the type of thing that would be on the back of the Thanos card. Like this is the Texas Twister card, and they go in order. So there's two uh, sets, and I can't remember how many were in here. I think there are like 200 or something. I probably have it. Yeah, 240 cards in total. So the more cards you have, the better. Uh, you could just sell the cards, but they're going to be worth a lot more if you could find this binder. So if you could find the binder just alone, that's good. Uh, these come from the 1990s. I believe these particular ones came out in around 1993. Uh, there's lots of different um, uh, series in which they came out with these cards. Um, you'll sometimes see a comic book out there called the Official Handbook of the Marvel Universe. Those aren't typically worth that much in and of themselves unless you have like complete sets or something like that. But uh, uh, again, the key thing with these are these binders. If you ever see them around... Uh, pick them up because they could be a really, really a nice flip for you. And it's hard to see on the bottom, but if you look real closely, you can see it says Master Edition. Uh, and that's a key with these binders. People like those Master Edition ones. Uh, okay. Now, the next one, I've talked about this uh, many times on this channel when telling people about things that they should look out for in terms of comic books. And this is uh, one of the uh, holy grails of modern comics. It is New Mutants 98. It is one that I found recently in a comic book collection. Actually, Mrs. Primetime picked it out. She knew I've been looking for this forever. She teases me about it all the time when we go uh, through collections and jokes that she found New Mutants 98. So I couldn't believe in my last haul video that I did when she pulled this book out and showed it to me. The reason why it's so valuable is it's the first appearance of this character right here, Deadpool. Now, this book is not in the best of condition. As you can see here, um, there's creases right along the side of it. There's creases on the bottom of it. There's some uh, wear to the spine. So all of these things take away uh, damage from the book. There's what we call corner blunting there as well. Uh, there's some issues uh, on the back cover as well. If you zoom into it, uh, there's some, you know, there, there you can see there's a crease on the bottom left. So all these things bring it down to what we would call fine condition. That's a technical comic related term, a technically fine Midas, minus it's graded on a 10 point scale. 
But, but here's the important thing. That being said, despite all those creases and everything, right, this book still sold for the asking price of $175. And if you find this book, New Mutants 98, I mean, I don't even... I don't even care what the condition is. Practically, you'll still be able to sell it because, I mean, unless it's just shredded to pieces. But, um, you know, as long as it's in, you know, relatively decent shape, um, you'll still be able to sell it. does not have to be a near mint. Uh, again, for a 15 cent book or less that I picked up, I mean, I've got pennies invested into this thing. Selling it for 175 is uh, terrific. Now, uh, that brings us up to our last item, uh, the number one most profitable item uh, or group of items in my eBay store for May was this lot of uh, 29 Conan Savage Sword of Conan, uh, technically, uh, comic books. Conan the Barbarian, Arnold Schwarzenegger portrayed him in the movies. Uh, these are comic book magazines, so they are bigger than the average a comic book size. Uh, they literally are the size of a magazine and they are black and white inside. Um, one of the reasons that these sold for so much money, uh, I wound up taking a best offer of 260 on them, is because they have issues number 1 to 12 and then they have issues 15 to 21. That's important to point out because if you could sell or point out that you are selling a continuous run of comic books, or a continuous run of any type of magazine or anything uh, that is very appealing to a collector because you know they have a continuous story that they could read they don't have something missing now yeah this person wouldn't have issues 13 and 14 but those aren't as difficult to track down as 1 through 12 would be you know and that gives you you know at least you know one solid you know year there of um, you know of comic books so um, you know you know person who buys it is, is good to go for a while in terms of reading content because there's a lot of information in these uh, in these magazines uh, comic book magazines so um, uh, I didn't even have anything invested into these anymore uh, by the time that I sold it because I bought it as part of a big collection from the got junk dealer that I've talked about uh, before who uh, sold me a lot of stuff in his trailer that he had picked out of people's houses. And uh, this was a comic book collection that was left behind. And this was uh, part of the collection. And so I had already made my money back on the uh, collection that I purchased. And so this was just extra. I was sitting around for a while and I just took the time to um, list it and sold uh, within a week. So that's it. That is the top uh, item. I hope that uh, this was... Um, educational for you again if there's uh, any questions on uh, as usual uh, please just let me know down below let me know in the comment section also what your um, top favorite item is that i found uh, you know which one was the best what was something that you learned the most from that uh, helps me to see that kind of feedback uh, from the uh, you know, from these episodes that I wind up doing. Now, uh, before I leave you, I want to make sure that I pass on a couple of housekeeping notes uh, for you. So, number one, uh, you may have noticed that there have not been any videos for about a week. There's a reason for that. Uh, the reason for that is I actually took a vacation. Uh, I took a vacation for five days and six nights to Disney World. Had a great time when I was over there. Um, you know, but when I'm over there, I'm focusing on family and I'm not focusing on making YouTube videos. In fact, I'm really trying to get away at that point from anything related to reselling because I'm trying to clear my mind and I'm trying to do things that are going to, you know, refocus me for the types of uh, social media endeavors that I'm on with regards to reselling and other aspects of my business. So it was good for that. Uh, have some, um, you know, some good ideas for the channel. Uh, there's going to be some upgrades, I believe, that you're going to see pretty soon in terms of me um, uh, making a decision to invest now that we've hit over 5,000 subscribers, by the way. That was something that happened while I was um, away uh, for the vacation. So thank you to all of you who subscribed. I mean, there's been over 100 people practically that have joined up uh, and subscribed to the channel since I've been away without me adding a single video during that time. So uh, that uh, means a lot to me. So welcome to all of you who are new into the channel and who have stuck around this long. But it is time for me now that I've hit that 5,000 number. I was kind of waiting to see when that would happen. And uh, now I want to invest in some more uh, high-tech software for the channel. So that's going to be a little bit of a learning curve for me to do that, but I'm going to start that process pretty soon. 
I do have an upcoming uh, little business trip that I'm be doing to uh, Chicago, and while I am there, that's going to be um, some point uh, this week coming up. I am going to do a video with uh, Craigslist Hunter, uh, so I am really looking forward to that. He is someone I really look up to, and uh, I'm looking forward to meeting him in person. I've done an interview with him before, but uh, on this channel, but uh, getting to meet him in person and going to the trading post and checking out his store. It's going to be a good learning experience uh, for me, and I'm just looking forward to having a lot of fun with that. And uh, I uh, may film some videos while I am away because that trip's different. That's a business trip, so I don't have family with me. Um, so I have a different type of focus, and I might have some free time at night where I can make some videos. So if so, uh, I will do that for you. Uh, the other thing I want to mention is that had some technical issues with regards to uh, some interviews I've been trying to do recently, mostly uh, the first interview I tried to do with Chris, the thrift shop hustler. And uh, now we made that interview up uh, the next night uh, when Google Hangouts started working again. But then I had another problem with that uh, just tonight, as a matter of fact. Uh, we were supposed to have a thrift battle on this channel between Chris and Eric, the vintage flipper. Uh, but there was a Google Hangouts outage all across the state of New York. So it was literally impossible for me to do the um, do the video with him. I know and I am aware that there are other options out there, um, but those options um, are not perfect. And those those are we have tested so far and they are not working exactly the way we need them to right now. So uh, I'm going to keep working on that on my end. And rather than go to bed defeated for the night, I decided to just try to, uh, you know, try to focus on what I could control. And what I could control is making a video like this for you. And uh, so I hope that you enjoyed it. So uh, with that being said, um, you know, I'm just going to end off uh, by, you know, just apologizing for some of the technical issues, again, out of my control, but um, trying to trying to do my best to uh, to work through those for you. It's um, it's challenging being a content creator and dealing with some of these tech issues on YouTube uh, and also trying to run the uh, reselling business. But um, the good uh, definitely outweighs the bad. So um, it's just a little hurdle that we've got to get through right now. And uh, hopefully we'll get through that pretty soon. So if you uh, enjoyed this video, make sure you hit the like button. Uh, make sure you subscribe to the channel. If you haven't yet, please pass it on to others who you think might find this type of information helpful. Make sure you join my Facebook group, the Facebook Reselling Resource Center. I'm pointing down below because where it says see more, that's where you're going to see the links uh, to the uh, to the Facebook group. So there's almost 10,000 members in there. Please come over and join. It's free. Um, it's a friendly, supportive environment. I think you'll really enjoy it. And lastly, make sure you follow me on Instagram. That's at prime underscore time underscore treasure because that's where I could communicate with you when I am away. So even when I was away uh, on that vacation, I still communicated with people through there. I, I gave a little bit of personal insight into some funny things that happened while I was uh, while I was on the vacation. I also had a couple of brief video clips that I made before the trip that I kind of spread out. Um, throughout my vacation. So I posted a couple things related to reselling when I was there that I made before the trip. So that's where you should go uh, if you want to you know, check in on anything going on um, with me when I am away for some trips, if I can't uh, put some YouTube videos together. So uh, that's pretty much it. And I hope you enjoyed it. And I'll see you all back at the next video, everyone. Take care.